yesterday, 31st July 2013, the Court of Appeal dealt with three linked cases. Tony Nicholson, Paul Lamb, and a third man known only as Martin, raising issues that are described as a so-called right to die. Now, I don't think that's a particularly helpful term. Um, as an adult with capacity to make that decision for myself, I can refuse life-saving medical treatment, uh, and I could commit suicide without it being a crime uh, since 1961. But these three men could not do that for themselves. They needed some help to end their lives. And consent is no defence to murder, however caring the setting or compassionate the motives. And assisted suicide is clearly still a crime. The Court of Appeal was never going to change that law. That's a matter for Parliament. What the Court of Appeal did say yesterday is that the Director of Public Prosecution's guidance on when he will exercise his discretion to prosecute for assisting suicide may not be clear enough in how it applies to health and social care professionals as opposed to members of uh, the patient's friends or family. We should see some revised guidance unless the DPP chooses to wait for the likely appeal to the Supreme Court of this case. Now, even if the courts won't deal with changing the substantive law on assisted suicide, there will still be lots of focus on end-of-life decisions over the next few months and years. Supreme Court is due shortly to hand down its decision on medical futility, an end-of-life withdrawal of treatment in Aintree versus James, and the withdrawal of the Liverpool care pathway around the country will also raise lots of issues around end-of-life care planning. These are really difficult decisions for clinicians, patients and their families to have to deal with. And it's always good to get advice at an early stage, try and do the right thing, but keep the cases out of court for everybody's sake.